this. Most people ask me the same question when they see it. Like, why? Or what are you going to do with it? And honestly, I never really had a good answer. I always just said, I don't really know. You see, this problem is never about having an animatronic manta ray lamp. It's always about the process of making it. It all started when I got access to a woodworking shop at the University of Makerspace. For the first time in like 7 or 8 years, I suddenly had access to pretty much every single tool I ever wanted. Now I just need a project, something that was beyond anything I've made before. A project where I didn't hold back or ask myself if it was possible. And this project, it would be glorious, and with all of my imagination, I made a desk lamp. Now, my confidence was high. I just needed to design it and then build it. Easy, right? Well, my idea was to make a manta ray. Why a manta ray, you might ask? Because look at them. They're magnificent. I just need to take a manta ray and make it into a lamp. Easy. I just didn't know. I, I didn't know I could spend days, countless hours, searching the web for screws. Screws! How are these many types of screws? I just need some screws to fit my made-up requirements. How can it be this difficult? And how is there literally only one seller on AliExpress who can sell me what I need? I mean, thank you, but still. Okay, okay, I got my screws. Now, I thought I had a decent amount of woodworking experience. But at the first day I was in the woodworking shop, I went to pick out the piece of sherry wood I was going to work with. And when I brought it in, the guy working there was like, I mean, it's a very nice piece of wood, but... You know that's oak and not cherry, right? So I went out with my reduced sense of confidence and at least picked the correct wood type. This lamp started as almost raw lumber, and the part I feared the most was the manta ray's mouthpieces. Those little lobs that twist under the body, they have this like weird 3D curve to them and woodworking tools. Well, most of them are really good at 2D profiles. At first, I had no idea how to make them. But it turns out, with some careful bandsaw cuts from both sides and a lot of sanding, it started to take shape. Now, you would imagine if you spent all of this time, like designing, building, making all the parts, that when you disassemble it, they would actually remember how it goes back together. I definitely, like, reassembled and disassembled and reassembled and disassembled parts, like, probably 10 times over. It's like, oh yeah, no, one cog is off, the entire movement doesn't work. Now I need to spend the next like 15 minutes disassembling it, retrying. Oh no, this link doesn't actually go there, because this is like 2mm shorter than the other link that look pretty much identical. I edited out so much footage so I actually looked professional, but you should, I mean, I thought it was going to be like a 2 hour maximum assembly and it's like, you know, 10 hours spread over multiple days. No, I have to admit, the first time I turned it on, it squeaked like a whale going through puberty. I mean, was this the curse of acrylic? But after painstakingly putting grease on every single joint, it was finally silent. And the filming process was a blast. I ended up using the office robot, called the Yumi, as a glorified camera rig. I basically just clear taped my phone to the robot's hand and let it do most of the pans and shots. And after messing up the assembly more times than I like to admit, I finally got everything together. 